Welcome back and welcome to part two of our modernization mini-series. Uh, just as a reminder, if you missed part one of the mini-series, uh, go back and register for that session. You'll then have access to the recording. Uh, make sure you sign up for the future sessions. We'll be uh, providing uh, three more updates after today's update over the next uh, three weeks. So today we're going to be uh, diving deeper into networking fundament fundamentals. And specifically, we'll be talking about enabling greater connectivity between uh, the control assets and software that we updated in part one of the modernization mini-series. And even more importantly, we'll be focused on enabling control system security. So as a reminder, the format for the, the webinar today is going to be uh, we'll speak through the content. If you have questions during the middle of the uh, presentation, please chat them in. Our moderators will answer those questions as they come up uh, if we can. If you'd like to reserve your question for the live Q&A, we'll spend about 10 to 15 minutes answering questions live if, uh, if people have them. <clears throat> Let's jump into uh, this networking fundamentals uh, part two of our mini series. Before getting to too much content, we, we do want to just take a, a moment to revisit uh, the end game of this modernization mini series. And what we're working towards is bringing the connected enterprise to life. And by that, what we mean is we want to help our customers get more value out of the assets that they've invested in, in their manufacturing process, in their supply chain, through their distribution center, and then drive that value to your customers. So the way we're going to do that is modernize control assets, the assets that feed into uh, the control system, uh, and also optimize the existing assets today and get more throughput through your manufacturing process. And as another quick revisit, <clears throat> we'll just uh, redefine a smart connected system in case you missed uh, session one. But uh, essentially, a smart connected system is comprised of these six different components on the screen. One of the really core and important pieces of a smart connected system are smart devices. So smart devices are self-aware. They have a microprocessor. They have the ability to update other assets around them. Uh, in addition to that, we've got uh, a need to extend sessions or visualization out to mobile devices, uh, drive better analytics and information management through uh, visualized systems, enable greater computing capabilities by providing resources that are potentially directly in the chassis of a processor, maybe it's on the edge of a given process, or maybe it's even on-prem or in the cloud. In addition to that, we really need to uh, provide better integrated control and information throughout the multiple layers of the manufacturing plant floor, as well as, and this is where our focus will be today, uh, drive connectivity throughout the entire uh, install base of your manufacturing process. So we spoke to some of these outcomes that you can expect through modernization and really today where we're going to be focused is not only in uh, helping reduce risk but specifically we're going to be speaking a lot to uh, enabling this greater connectivity and system security. We thought it would be helpful to start by defining what Ethernet IP is. And the reason we're doing that is because Ethernet IP is the uh, communication protocol that Rockwell has standardized on their hardware and software. And we use a, a combination of different services in Ethernet IP within a majority of our technology. So Ethernet IP is really a is considered a best-in-class Ethernet communication network. 
that provides users with tools to deploy standard Ethernet technology in industrial automation applications. So the easiest way to break that down, the definition from the ODVA website is think of Ethernet IP as a standard. So it's supported by ODVA. It's open. Uh, it is it can be leveraged by anyone and everyone in industrial automation or outside of industrial automation, which is a main com one of the most compelling reasons as to why Rockwell Automation leverages Ethernet IP. And it's also extremely familiar. So in our day-to-day -day lives, we go to work, we connect maybe potentially through hardwired connections, or we've got wireless networks that we manage at home or in our workplace. Ethernet IP is an extremely similar user experience to managing any of those networks in a, at home or in our workplace. So one of the questions that we get asked quite frequently is, if you're leveraging or if we're leveraging Ethernet IP, what else can we do with Ethernet IP? And what is so special about Ethernet IP? Over the last uh, 15 to 20 years, we've worked very closely with ODVA uh, to build out four different Ethernet IP based technologies that stack on top of the standard Ethernet IP packet. And as previously mentioned, we, we leverage some of these or a mix of these different technologies in uh, many of our uh, hardware and software solutions that we've built. So we'll take a moment to just break down what each one of these different uh, SIP-based protocols mean and what they provide to you as a user. So on the far left, uh, we'll start with SIP Motion. And what SIP Motion is, is it... Uh, it allows us to convert a non-deterministic Ethernet or eth a non-deterministic network like Ethernet IP into a deterministic network for repeatable motion control. If you think about uh, a motion network and what is required, we need to have assets moving to a fixed place at a fixed time, but we have a lot of different communication that's happening on the wire in addition to just sending motion commands. So SIP motion allows us to provide that level of control on a standard Ethernet network. In addition to SIP motion, we have what's called SIP safety. So SIP safety is similar to SIP motion in that we have the ability to control a mix of safety rated devices and standard devices on the same standard Ethernet network without any special hardware or switches in place to do so. What this means to you is that you have the ability to eliminate expensive devices in your control panels like safety relays or safety IO modules which can reduce panel space and also uh, save on wiring time. The next stack on top of our protocol that we can layer on top of standard Ethernet IP is called SIP Security. This is uh, the most release, most recent addition to Ethernet IP, the Ethernet IP stack. And what SIP Security provides is the ability to require device authentication. Uh, it checks the integrity of content in a given Ethernet uh, packet and it also has the ability to encrypt data between multiple devices. And then finally, uh, we have SIP Energy. So SIP Energy provides a standardized object that contextualizes energy data associated with a specific end device. A really great example of that might be something like a rock automation uh, power meter, could be a uh, power flex drive, so many of those objects uh, that have energy associated data also have a SIP energy object that exists within that, in, within that uh, end device. So we can pull that data directly out of that end device and use that for uh, energy insights. The reason we brought this up is because 
many of the content that we'll be sharing over the next few sessions will be tied back to some of these concepts. So we thought it was important to provide this level of detail so that you felt prepared and uh, aware of what these things mean when they come up in uh, future slides or future sessions. Now, when we think about uh, a strategy around connecting devices, it's really important to stick with a standard or maybe a combination of standards. So the good thing is, is that there are, are uh, extremely well-documented standards to leverage. Uh, one of the most common standards that many customers are adhering to and adopting today is what's called the NIST cybersecurity framework. What's great about this is that this framework provides uh, five different categories of things to consider as you build out your Ethernet network strategy. So those, those frameworks are dependent on uh, identifying, protecting, detecting, responding, and being able to recover to events that occur within your control system network. So there's a little bit of detail on each one of these. I'll highlight some of the, uh, the details here, but <clears throat> from an identification perspective, uh, identification really is tied back to having the ability to understand what the current state and risk is to systems, assets, and data within the control system network. Uh, protection is tied back to uh, the ability to implement safeguards and ensure the delivery of critical infrastructure services. Detection is defined by implementing appropriate activities to identify a cybersecurity event. Uh, in the respond portion of this framework, we're looking to implement activities that take action regarding uh, a detected cybersecurity event. So how are you going to respond to something when it, occur when it occurs? And then finally, in the recovery portion of the framework, you need to have a strategy to be able to implement activities and recover from a given event that occurs in your control system network. The NIST framework pairs very well with the IEC 62443 standard. So this is a series of standards that define procedures for implementing an electronically secure industrial automation control system network. As you can see, it's very similar to the defense. And this image is similar to the defense in depth image you may have seen from Rockwell in the past, but essentially you've got a layer of, you've got multiple layers of uh, standards that apply to general networking practices policies and procedures that should be adhered to, uh, a system level uh, definition and set of standards, and then all the way down to a product level set of standards. So as a vendor, we are uh, in the industrial automation space required to adhere to the standard. So we've been working very diligently to build out strategies and products that align with uh, the IEC 62443 standard here over the last um, five to 10 years. Now, if we think about what we're trying to accomplish through network modernization, uh, we're trying to address numerous pain points. So many systems that exist today are made up of very siloed networks. Those networks typically also have very limited security uh, policies that exist within the system itself. In addition to that, uh, from a, a, a pain point perspective, you know, many of the team members that support the operational network today or operational network assets like control PLCs or drives or switches you know, may not have as much familiarity with what it takes to manage a modern network. In addition to that, because there is a need for uh, connecting these devices, uh, along with that comes the ability to manage all of that data. Uh, so as control systems grow and the volume of data 
uh, grows substantially with that. It can be difficult to really manage and capture that data over time. And you now the reality is that there are a ton of options that exist within the market. So it may be a little bit confusing as to you know, where to start, what to do, and uh, what to take advantage of when certain investments are made. So our goal is to really provide some direction uh, in the next couple slides as to you know what to do and and how to work through these pain points as we work on modernizing the network and as rock automation uh, you know has looked at and considered and built out a strategy you know we thought hey it would be the the best thing that we could do would be to partner with a world-class provider of uh, IT based solutions. And so that partner for us is Cisco. We've worked very closely and diligently uh, over many years to build out a comprehensive uh, solution stack that combines IT, uh, Cisco's IT capabilities with Rockwell's familiarity with what's required on the plant floor. So through that partnership, we've really built out uh, a team of trusted domain experts. Uh, we're very committed to this continued partnership and to drive success throughout the industry. And I think because of our shared expertise, uh, what that's doing is is helping us develop you know, groundbreaking and uh, new feature-rich solutions. So if, if you've participated in events from Rockwell in the past, you may have heard of uh, us. You may have heard us referencing this converged plant-wide Ethernet set of documents. And what it is is it's truly a a very holistic set of documents that we've worked with Cisco to develop uh, over the last 15 years, and they provide uh, great detail into what needs to be done at what layer to not only provide you know, uptime and reliability, but also really great insight into you know, very specific use cases or applications like wireless and or um, traversing a firewall and how to do that securely. So there's a really robust set of documentation that provides uh, recommended architectures that are tested and validated and aligned with security design. This, these documents will help simplify uh, network and security design uh, since our partnership is aligned and, and really aligns well with what's needed in the manufacturing environment and that is connecting the IT layer down to the OT network. And uh, because of our partnership, we're able to, you know, really minimize risk, optimize production yield, and also enable business agility. Now, I mentioned this robust, robust set of documents, and this is a snapshot of the uh, 15 or so different documents we've developed with Cisco. Uh, so you see here a, a set of design guides, which will provide really great detail as to and what will be needed within each one of these different topics to accomplish the end goal. Uh, and then in addition to design guides, we also have white papers that can be used to share with counterparts, uh, to, to collaborate with and provide a high level overview of what each one of these different topics will help you accomplish. So we talked a little bit about some of the cybersecurity standards that exist, a framework that you can leverage, uh, the IEC 62443 standards and documentation that exists within the standards themselves. We talked about our partnership with Cisco and how that will help you as a manufacturer. And so what we'd like to do now is just transition into talking specifically about control system security. I mentioned this earlier, and maybe maybe you've seen this, maybe you haven't, but if you think about um, a control system network and the vul layers of vulnerability that exist within 
a given network, it's really important to have a variety of solutions that a, a bad actor um, would have to work through in order to completely break down your control system security methodology. So we call this strategy uh, defense in depth. And what it does is it shields uh, it shields targets behind multiple levels of diverse security countermeasures to really reduce risk. So if you look at the image on the right, you know, imagine if you will, if somebody, for example, uh, got a hold of some of the policies and procedures that you're leveraging, uh, they would have to work through those policies and procedures in that first layer, but then they'd be faced with another different security strategy that would be aligned with you know, physical protection, right? And if somebody were able to work through or get on site past your physical protection from a security perspective, they'd then be faced with another layer of complexity uh, tied to uh, different strategies put in place to secure your network directly. So you know, that, that same methodology can be applied through those first three layers we spoke to all the way down to the device layer. Uh, so this is a really, really important tactic to leverage and put in place today. And the good thing is, is that the policies and procedures that we referenced earlier provide detail to how to accomplish these different tactics uh, within each layer, specifically in this defense and depth strategy. So from a, an options perspective, uh, directly from Rockwell, we've got a couple of different control system security solutions. And uh, we think this is a really scalable approach that aligns well with that defense in depth strategy we just spoke to. So if you're leveraging uh, factory talk software today, or if you have Studio 5000 uh, or factory talk view or a combination of multiple products from Rockwell, one of the foundational items uh, to that uh, Factory Talk experiences is, is our uh, Factory Talk services platform. So the services platform is installed with all Rockwell software, and one component of the services platform is called Factory Talk Security. So there's an option uh, if you're leveraging Windows Active Directory to tie Factory Talk Security directly into that. So you can develop and deploy different. Uh, security policies uh, to hardware, to software, and use your user and or user group, um, uh, your pre-existing users and user groups, and apply those directly to those, uh, those different policies. In addition to that, we've got another layer of control system security that's called source and execution protection. So this is a, a license-based solution, but uh, with source protection, we can encrypt the content uh, and control who can interact with content specific to a controller. Uh, in addition to that, you could also uh, add or leverage uh, license-based execution protection to further secure a given asset and prevent code from running on uh, unauthorized controllers. So imagine if you will, you've deployed a control logics, you're an OEM, you deployed a, a control logic solution to an end user. Uh, you could say that that runtime would only run with that specific controller uh, and not be able to be downloaded or run on any other controller uh, globally. And more recently, we've added this option for SIP security and I spoke a little bit to this earlier, but what SIP security does is it, it provides the ability to reject data that has been altered. We can reject messages sent by untrusted devices. We can also uh, even extend that to reject messages that request actions that are not allowed. So this is really a device level security solution and uh, this is great protection from bad actors like man in the middle attacks that you know if somebody was on premise you may not be aware that that type of attack was occurring but you would be able to mitigate that uh, that vulnerability uh, through SIP security technology.
just a quick overview and deeper dive on SIP security. Uh, there's three different uh, options when it comes to leveraging SIP security. So we can apply any of these individually or a combination of these um, different options, but we have the ability to authenticate. Uh, so this prevents unauthorized devices from establishing connections with existing devices. The ability to provide integrity, uh, which helps prevent tampering or modification of communication packets. And uh, we also have the ability to encrypt what's on the wire through confidentiality. So we've started to embed SIP security directly in many of our new devices. We've got a list of the initial releases here, but uh, 5580 controllers, the new EN4TR uh, communication adapter, Kinetics 5700 uh, servo drives, as well as PowerFlex 755T drives, all have native SIP security support. Now, if, for example, you wanted to protect an end device like uh, an old PLC5 or uh, a a PowerFlex 525 drive, you name it, you can use what's called a piece of hardware called uh, the SIP security proxy. So we would put that proxy device in front of that end device and, uh, and provide a SIP security connection down to the proxy itself. And uh, that would then protect the end device. So in order to, before I move on from the slide, in order to generate the policies and zones and conduits that would exist between multiple devices, you would be using a tool called Factory Talk Policy Manager. So in that tool, uh, we are uh, establishing and defining what devices can talk to which devices uh, and which devices are not part of that SIP security policy. So uh, through that tool, we're able to uh, generate a SIP security uh, strategy directly. Uh, and based on where customers are at and meeting them uh, in the middle of uh, their, their current modernization strategy for their network, our channel partners have the ability to provide uh, two different services that align really well with uh, where needs exist in the market today. So th the first service is what's called a security posture survey. And our channel team has the ability to come on site to uh, temporarily connect to your control system network and generate a uh, security posture survey that provides detail as to what network uh, vulnerabilities may exist in your control system today. Uh, in addition to that, as a, as a follow-up to that security posture survey or as a separate service completely, we would also have the ability to assess your network holistically. And through that assessment, then we could move towards helping you design a more robust, modern, reliable, and secure uh, network. So uh, either one of these services, I think, align well with where many customers are at today. I would highly encourage you to reach out to your channel partner to uh, better understand exactly what they're able to provide locally. Uh, in this series, we, we touched on uh, some of the standards you can take advantage of, uh, what Ethernet IP is, who we've partnered with within this space, and uh, spoke specifically to some of the different control system security strategies you can leverage from Rockwell Automation that may be part of uh, an investment you've already made uh, and or uh, an investment you may consider making in the future. So hopefully you found our session helpful today. We're gonna open it up to uh, Q&A. Uh, and as a reminder, uh, our next session will be covering our intelligent devices strategy and we'll, we'll highlight how you can continue reducing risk by leveraging those new uh, modern intelligent devices.